What's good YouTube? Welcome back to LIFG. Just doing a quick video here because uh, the update patch is out. So I'm going to go over all the cards that have been changed, whether they were nerfed or buffed, and give you my opinion on each one. So we'll start off here with Caleb's Intervention. Honestly, this is one of the least played interventions in the game. And it got buffed, so that's a good thing. So right now, it, the first two parts are the same. You can play one when granted in or give one of your units plus two plus two and overwhelm this turn or kill an enemy weapon or relic. Before you were not able to kill a relic with it. So now you, you now that you can kill a relic with it, it's a much better card. I think this was a good buff and a pretty warranted buff. You might actually see it being played a bit more now. And it in no way breaks the card. This card would be really strong if it was a fast spell. Because the second ability would just become pretty I don't, I don't want to say busted but pretty solid. So this is, a, this is a good improvement. Scrap Hound. Everything in Scrap Hound is the same. You can, before you were able to pay four or sacrifice another unit to give it plus two plus two, or if it was a Grenadine, give it plus four plus four. They buff the plus four plus four to plus five plus five. So that's the change with this card. Seems fine, I guess. I mean, it, it, it it's not gonna break the card by any means, but it does make it stronger. Talir's Intervention, and this is one I actually play. If you guys watched the last event I did or one of my Sentinel decks, this buff is a good buff. So first of all, the, the first ability got changed. It used to be you gain three life, now it's you gain four. The second ability is the same, or put one of your Explorers or Sentinels into your hand, that remained the same. And the third change I think is the strongest change. So right now you can just silence an enemy unit, while previously you could only silence an attacking unit. So that's a big change and I actually like that change a lot. The clause for silence an attacking unit, a lot of the times it just didn't do anything. Because if you silence an attacking unit with Warcry, guess what, they already got the Warcry. As an example, so I like that buff a lot. And uh, this favor is uh, a much stronger card now. And the next one we got is Don Walker, and that is a hard nerf. So Don Walker still functions the exact same. The ability is the same, except now there is a requirement for his void ability to trigger. So now you need four time influence for his void ability to trigger. That's going to make it a lot harder for the th uh, three color decks that play him to bring him back. But honestly, if you're running in a, in a two color deck, you'll be fine. I'm, I'm going to run the card still. It's still a good card. And if you watched my budget Elysian deck, you can see how oppressive this guy can be. Even early game if you don't have a way to silence him. So I think this, this nerf is fine. It's not going to make the card garbage. I'm still going to play him in Elysian, I'm still going to play him in um, some of the specific decks that I play him in that are two colors, two factions, so I'm okay with that nerf. Let's move on. Gear Master. Okay, so this is not a card that's played very much anyways. It used to cost 4 for a 2-2 two, two, and now it's 3 for a 1-1, one, one. so not a big change there. Elysian Pathfinder got nerfed. Everything's the same here, except now it's two time influence versus the one that it used to be. So I don't think anything's wrong with that nerf. It seems fine. The main deck it's been played in right now is a four faction deck. So it's slightly harder for them to cast it, but not so much. They they play find the way. So they'll be fine. Frontier Confessor. I actually don't know what this guy used to do. I only played him in Limited. So let me pull him up. Okay, so he used to be... Right, that's right. He used to be 5 for a 3-4, and now he's 4 for a 3-2. So he costs less, but they nerfed his defense a lot. Yeah, yeah, I remember him. So he's a much worse blocker in Limited at this point. And he only costs one less, so he's. I wouldn't say he's a better card. I liked him better at 5 for a 3-4, because he had a decent body for blocking. Okay. 
And next we have Valkyrie Arcanist. This one got nerfed as well. She used to cost 5, and now she costs 6. And I mean, I only see her played in Limited, so this this nerf is strictly based on Limited. I'm not going to complain about it too much. She's pretty solid. In Limited, of course. Alright, Emerald Spear. The ones I don't play very often, I have to look at. So Emerald Spear, it's more or less the same. It used to cost 6 for a 3-3, three, three, and now it costs 7 for a 4-3. So it does have the ability to kill a bigger unit, but it costs one more. Yeti Furflinger. Uh, this is a buff. I'm okay with this buff. It used to be 3 for a 3-3. Three, three. I'll tell you why I'm okay with this buff. It's triple primal influence for this unit, so them giving it one more on defense seems fine. Again, I'm basing that strictly on the fact that it's it's a rare unit for one, and it's triple primal influence. So them making it into a 3-4, I'm fine with that one. It's not something I see being played very often anyways. And Torgov got a very nice buff. So everything is the same with Torgov except the last part of his ability. It used to be he gets plus 3, plus 3 when you have 15 or more cards in your void. Now it's 10 or more cards in your void. So he can become uh, a 7, 8 a lot earlier than before. I like that buff. I, I played Torgov, as you guys know, so I'm fine with that buff. And Alu, I believe, used to cost 6. Yeah, Oli used to cost 6, and now she costs 5. That's the change there. Uh, I think that's fine. I didn't run this card because it cost 6 before. And I think I've even seen Rhino looking at it, and uh, it just didn't make any sense to play a 2 5 at 6 for what she does. So, is she going to see play because she costs 5 now? Not so much, but our chance. Are her chances of seeing play higher now that she costs one less? Absolutely. Is it more fair that she costs one less? I would say so. She's a 2-5 flyer. And I mean, for her second ability to trigger, you have to be playing very specific things. Moving on. Elysian Trailblazer got a nerf. I believe she used to be one primal. Yes, she used to be one primal, and now she is two primal. So she got a bit of a nerf. Clutch Keeper, I believe. Yeah, okay, so Clutch Keeper got a... Excuse me, quote-unquote buff. He used to cost 15, and now he costs 14. Yay for him. Good for you. Argentport Instigator got a nerf. Used to be one shadow in influence, and now it is two. I think that's fine. This is one of the best bodies in the game for the mana. Two for a three three with a strong ability was always really good. He set the curve. Making a making a cost two shadow influence. It's gonna matter, cause uh, a lot of those Argent Port decks and. And those Stone Scar decks that used to play him on turn two, it might not be possible to play him on turn two anymore. So, while this seems fine, it is going to affect how this card works in the more aggressive builds that he's in. So, a lot of the times, he's going to be a turn three card and not a turn two card. Alright, moving on to Battlefield. I have to look this one up Battlefield Scavenger. So she used to, or he used to, say, pay 5 to draw Valkyrie from your yard, and now it says pay 4, so it got a buff. I have no problems with that. Oh my gosh, Devastating Setback got a buff. That's crazy. Anyways, let's look at Hideout Pistol first. So Hideout Pistol got a buff. It used to be plus one plus oh. 
and now it's plus two plus O. Oh. Sure, seems fine. Let's move on to uh, one of the better cards here. Devastating Setback. Devastating Setback used to cost four, and now it costs three. The enemy player discards a spell or attachment of your choice from their hand, or each unit gets minus two, minus two this turn. That never used to say this turn. Let me double check. So I was saying it, it got a buff, but it actually, yeah. So they did reduce the cost, but they did make the second ability weaker. So the minus two minus two is for the turn, while before it was permanent, and uh, it used to cost one more. This is a nerf. The three makes the first ability stronger, but the second ability is a lot weaker. Steward of the Past got a nerf, a hard nerf. This is a hard nerf. I know. Let me go into what I think about this one. So the the cost is the same, influence is the same. I mean, they already changed that before. Power and toughness is the same. Deadly is the same. Now it just silences all units in the enemy void. That's it. That's a huge nerf. That is a huge nerf. So you get his ability once. When you cast him, you silence everything in the void. Before, when he came in, he did this. And then, as a passive ability, whenever a unit died while he was in play, he would silence that unit. That's a huge change. So now with your Steward of the Past, you're going to have to play it a bit more strategically because it's not just going to be out there ruining uh, Reanimator next day. So Re um, Reanimator is a bit happy to see this I would say. So that's a pretty big change. I'm not going to say they shouldn't have done it. I'm just salty because I play this a lot and a lot of these decks running around reanimating and, and um, re doing revenge. This was one of the only answers I had in Feln. It's still an answer, but it's a much weaker answer. So, yeah. Still a good card. I'm still going to use it. It's just not as good. So, Callus Survivalist got a buff. He used to be Triple Shadow Influence, and now he's Double Shadow Influence. It makes him better, I guess. I mean... If you weren't playing him before, you might still not be playing him now, but whenever the influence requirement is less, that it's a better card. This hurts. This hurts more than this. Because this is still this is still gonna do a lot of what it usually does faster. This hurts. Inquisitor's Halberd. Okay, so this used to be Valkyrie Ally 2, and now it's Valkyrie Ally, you get plus 3. Seems fine. Stone Powder Alchemist got a buff. Used to be 4 4 2, two and now it's 3 4 2, two. I'm happy about that. I play it in a Jund. I'm saying Jund, but it's Fire, Justice, Shadow <laughs> deck, uh, mid range one, and uh, him costing 3 instead of 4 is going to make him a lot better. Yeah, he's just a good card that got better. Withering Witch got Withering Witch got a nerf as well. All the shenanigans people used to do before with Withering Witch, Withering Witch, it's gonna be a bit trickier. So now when she summons, she does um, each undamaged enemy unit's life becomes one. Before. Before you could say Lightning Storm and then player and she'd still kill or play Black Sky then player and she'd still kill. Now you have to do it the other way. If if they've been damaged, she doesn't trigger on them. So you have to play her and then play your wipe so she dies. She's worse. She's noticeably worse, but she's still 
very playable in the decks that you'd play her in. She's still going to get the job done. So this seems fine. I mean, this is the second time this card's been nerfed. I believe it was a 1-4 at some point, and it got dropped to a 1-1, one, one, and now it's at this point. It's just, the card is very abusable with Vara and other effects, so they still just keep fine-tuning it. Black Sky Harbinger got a buff, and I'm happy. I don't want to say I'm happy about this buff. I'm fine with this buff. Here's the thing. Black Sky Harbinger no longer dies to Suffocate. Good job. Not that many people played Suffocate. Black Sky Harbinger now dies to Vanquish. It never used to die to Vanquish, and that used to mean a lot. So this buff, in some ways, is a nerf. Because while not a lot of people play Suffocate, a lot of people play Vanquish. A lot of people play Vanquish. So, in my opinion, this card just got easier to kill. I'm fine with the, ch with the change. It is 6 for a 4-5 legendary unit. So I'm fine with the change, but I don't think this is strictly a buff. I think it's, it's a nerf as well, because... And I, I, I'm just saying that for the one card, which is Vanquish. But it's the one card that is one of the most played removal spells in the game. So many decks run Vanquish. And finally, we got Statutory Maiden. She got a nerf as well. I'm actually going to pull her up. Because she still does pretty much the same thing. It's just worded a bit differently. So let me, let me go over this. Okay. So deadly. She still has deadly. Enemy units can't and team or revenge. When an enemy unit dies, transform it into a plus two plus two cudgel and draw it. Before she used to say deadly. Enemy units that die transform into plus two plus two cudgels. You draw them. <sighs> I think it effectively does the same thing. Yeah, I think it effectively does the same thing. So Entomb still doesn't trigger from it. Revenge still doesn't trigger from it. Yeah. I might be missing something on this one. Because of how it's, how it's worded. And I might have to play some games with it. But I think for the most part, this is going to work very similar to how it worked before. And that's the last card. So I'd say overall... I'm I'm about even with the changes. Like it. Neutral. Like it. Neutral. Neutral. Like it. Don't like it. Neutral. Like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. Like it, neutral, neutral, I actually like it, um, neutral, neutral, I'm neutral on this one because like I said, the second ability is weaker, but you can make someone discard earlier with it, so I'm neutral on this one, don't like it, but I get it, neutral, Neutral, like it, I get it. Neutral on this, as I, I, I went over the pros and cons, in my opinion, on this one. And um, I'm going to have to play test this to see how it actually functions in a game. But for now, I'm kind of neutral on that change. And that is all the cards. Let me know what you guys think of the changes. And um, if you like them or not. Thanks for watching.